In this video, we're going to take a look at the Cyphozoan adult medusa of the genus Aurelia. You can find a drawing and labeled structures of this animal on page 55 in the lab manual. So what I'm going to do is give you a walkthrough of some of the major parts and pieces of this animal that will help you to understand what you're seeing um, in the lab manual. So first of all, this is the X umbrella surface, or in other words, the top of the jellyfish's bell. And as you can see, um, the jellyfish is transparent to translucent. So let's work our way from the outside in. These structures, these kind of scallop structures, are the lappets. And between them, in each of these little grooves, here, here, and so on, all the way around are the ropalia that we talked about, where the cyphozoan jellyfish have their sensory structures concentrated. There is an entire series of canals that are extensions of the gastrovascular cavity that you can see through the, the X umbrella surface. And these four large cream colored loop shaped structures. These are the gonads and they're located up on the undersurface of the bell, but you can see them through the top. There is also a canal that runs all the way around the outer edge of the animal that if you had a magnifying glass or a dissection scope that you would be able to see that. In addition, at the very outer surface, on this end you can see it really clearly, are many, many tiny tentacles. These tentacles wrap all the way around every place except where you have ropalia. There are also, uh, in these canals, these radial canals, um, there are, I'm not gonna differentiate, there are names for them all, but we're not gonna worry about that. For our purposes, I just want you to be aware. Now you're gonna be wanting to draw this animal, so you can pause the video sometime and do a screen capture, but you need some information, like you need to know how big it is. So I'm gonna measure that for you. This animal is We'll call it 10.5 centimeters across the bell. Okay, you'll need that when you want to generate your scale bar. So on the X umbrella surface, that's really pretty much what you're gonna see. The lappets, the ropalia, and the, um, the tentacles around the margin. Sometimes they're called marginal tentacles. And when these animals swim, um, we'll talk more about how they feed. Um, actually, I'll tell you how they feed right now. So. These animals, as they swim, the bell pulses, pulses around, and these marginal tentacles whip around as the, the pulse ends and pulls water from the edges down underneath the, ten, underneath the bell so that the oral, the oral arms that are found there can capture the food. So I'm going to flip this over now. It's quite delicate. So... All right, this is the sub-umbrella surface. I'm just gonna put two probes in here to keep it from floating around too much. Okay, so now on the undersurface, if you look right in the center, there is an opening. If I can pull that back a little bit, so you see how I can pull back the edge of that? And there's an opening there. That opening is the mouth. And coming off of the edges or the corners of the mouth are these long, frilly tentacles. These tentacles, there are four of them. If I were to spread them all out, you could see them. There are four of them, and these are the oral arms. In the lab manual, they're called the oral arm of the manubrium. These are the structures that capture the food that this animal lives on. Okay, now you can also, through the, subsurf the surface of the subumbrella tissue, there's a little hole right here, another one here, and so on for the other four gonads. These lead to the gastric pocket. So the food is captured on the oral arms, it's stuffed up inside of this mouth, 
into the gastrovascular cavity, and then the fluid in the gastrovascular cavity is moved throughout the entire body of the, uh, of the jellyfish through these radial canals. It goes out through some of the canals and the water comes back through other canals. So it's carrying nutrients out to the live tissue and bringing waste material back into the center that, so that it can be released through the mouth. Uh, let's see what else you need to see here. Um, as far as the anatomy goes, we've covered the main parts and pieces. But these animals, as you know, are anatomically not complicated in terms of their tissue layers. They have the outer epidermal layer, the inner gastrodermal layer, and the modifications that we've talked about. Um, aside from that, that's everything you need to see on this critter. So um, you should pause the video, do a screen capture, and then draw the animal. Remember, we measured at 10.5 centimeters across, so you can use that to make your scale bar. I guess I'll, I'll mention one other thing, since we're all here together and all. If you had the opportunity to physically handle one of these, what you would find is that these animals actually have some substance to them. They're not just water-filled sacs. They're relatively, well, they're really pretty animals um, when you see them in the water and they're alive. Um, but you can see that there is some substance to them, and that is the mesoglial layer in between the epidermal and ectodermal layer, or the epidermis and the gastrodermis. All right, and that's your introduction to Aurelia and the things that I want you to see. Oh, one other hint. Whenever you're observing invertebrates in the lab or some other setting, if at all possible, you should always submerge them in water because that allows these delicate tissues to float so that you can see them and observe them more easily. If, you, if they were just plopped in here without any water, they would glom down on top of each other and you wouldn't be able to see a thing. All right, there you go.